Hey guys, in this session, we're going to be looking at inverse property. And what I've done is I've kind of split this up into two kind of sections here. The first section, the left-hand section with where it says zero and the right-hand section is one. So what do we mean by inverse property? Um, and I guess um, this is some things that, uh, some little facts that will help you guys out with um, manipulating numbers is this. You know, you've got three right here. Um, and somehow we need to do something to this three to change it to a zero, but you're not allowed to multiply by zero, all right? And so, you know, a lot of times when people see that, they go, okay, so three times zero is equal to zero, and negative seven times zero is equal to zero. Well, that's not really using inverse property. What you're just doing is using multiplying by zero. But what can you do to three to actually end up with zero? And I guess this is what the inverse property is. It's actually doing the opposite of what it is. So if you look at in this case, in this case, we've actually got plus three, that means the opposite of plus three is minus three. So we can say that three minus three is equal to zero. And say, for example, you got negative seven, the opposite of negative seven is actually plus seven. So negative seven plus seven is equal to zero. So that is what you wanna be doing to the numbers if you want it to equal to zero. You actually um, go with the opposite of whatever that number is. What about when you want to equal, um, have the answer actually equal to one. All right, so in this case, well, tough luck. I mean, there's nothing else. You, you can't really do, uh, like, you know, for example, sometimes people do this. They go, oh, seven minus six is equal to one. Well, that's not really inverse uh, because the opposite of negative, uh, positive seven is actually negative seven, and that actually ends up with a zero. So this is where you need to understand that you can actually multiply by the numbers reciprocal. What do I mean by that? So I could actually multiply 7 with 1 over 7 uh, because then I can see that the numerator is 7, the denominator is 7, 7 divided by 7 is 1. Likewise, when I have 1 over 5, I multiply it by its reciprocal. So in this case, it will be 5 over 1. Uh, but of course, I don't really need to write that 5 over 1 because 5 over 1 is just saying the same thing as 5. So uh, in the numerator, I've got 1 times 5, which is 5. 5 divided by 5 is equal to 1. So let's just put that there, 5 divided by 5, and 7 divided by 7. Now, what about 2 over 3? Um, and I guess in this case, once again, we have to multiply it by its reciprocal, which means the reciprocal is 3 over 2. And in the numerator, you've got 2 times 3, which is 6, and then 3 times 2, which is also 6. And then as you guys can see, 6 divided by 6 is equal to 1. So this is just some uh, really useful properties that's actually worth knowing um, when you want to manipulate numbers and you want to make them equal to 0 or when you want to e make it equal to 1. Cool, guys. That's basically it for this short little video. As always, thank you for watching.